I recently made a model of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant of the old sarcophagus. Now here's how I did that. Here's the lowdown on what I did. First of all, I took a piece of floral foam and uh, gave it the shape of the uh, 3D Chernobyl nuclear power plant by using aerial and other images. And then I used uh, air drying clay and uh, gave it a rough shape, a rough and rigid solid shape that I could base my further modeling on. As you can see, it's quite detailed already. Then the next step was to uh, paint all the clay once it dried. And finally to attach some polymer clay that is pretty much like plastic when it's dried in the oven. And uh, model all these individual tiles and things. And finally add the details like these uh, concrete structures there. And of course the famous chimney of the nuclear power plant which uh, had to be given a structure, a framework so to say, of uh, metal. And then I finally painted the entire thing so it looks nice and rusty and crumbling. And that is pretty much it. There we go. Chernobyl nuclear power plant scale 1 to 1000 model. Now here is what I did in detail and you might not want to watch this because um, it's just gonna be boring unless you actually want to build this. It's gonna be very verbose, so viewer discretion is advised. Now here's what I used to make this model. Some scissors, pliers, wire cutters, pen, tweezers, different types of brushes, a sponge which will also serve as a brush, uh, different types of rulers, some very sharp knives. I recommend getting scalpels at a pharmacy or something like that. Uh, some cotton swabs, some toothpicks, some pins, preferably a lot of these U-shaped pins, some rubber bands, plenty of aluminum foil, some kind of base, I use a glass here to hold uh, a wooden stick of the appropriate diameter, which will again become your chimney, some wire also for the chimney, I use uh, 0.5 millimeters electric wire here. Some modeling tools. You can also use spoons from fast food restaurants, but these modeling tools will work better, of course. A very fine metal file, an equally fine metal saw blade, just the saw blade itself, because otherwise you can't reach the spots. Uh, this uh, kitchen cookie baking tool thing. Then we need some tape duct tape, but also painter's tape, which is easy to remove again. Some floral foam. You can get that at any florist. Um, it's about two dollars or something. Some PVA glue, polyvinyl acetate glue, super glue, uh, some water-based gray paint. You don't actually really need that, but I use it anyway. Some very fine glass beads that you can add to paint to actually get a nice rusty crust that will look very realistic. Some model making colors. I used ruby red, black, white, neon yellow and neon orange for that. A dust mask. Some very soft air dry clay for modeling the base. Some polymer clay. I got black and white and a fluorescent variant. You can get it at any model making store, I suppose. Here you can see the fluorescent or more like phosphorescent polymer clay. It is kind of dark, but actually pretty visible when it's really dark. And some printouts, for example, of appropriate size octagons. And that would be for your chimney, but also an aerial view, for example from Google Maps, of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Then some side views preferably. And of course the schematics, because we're going to make this a scale model. So an accurate realistic model with a 1 to 1000 scale. So the actual chimney of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant would be 75.5 meters high, so ours will be 7.5 centimeters, and the rest accordingly. 
So first of all, I printed an aerial view of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant as of the appropriate size, as of our schematics for the scale model. And then we're just gonna put it on here, onto that floral foam. You can see this floral foam is very easy to shape and also to cut. You can just do it with your fingers in theory, but it leaves a very fine dust. And it's probably not too good to inhale, so that's what your dust mask comes in handy for. I should have worn it. So then I simply put the print on the foam brick, secured it with a few of the pins I have. And then I'm gonna use another one of these pins to actually go along all the outlines, all the different areas of the roof and stuff there are, which you can see I already did in this printout. And that'll leave you with a very nice line. And then I'd use my rulers to make that more visible, to use a pen and, you know, go in all these little dots, these little holes I did using the aerial view. And then I'd have a Pretty much an aerial view, a 2D, two-dimensional flat view of the power plant. And then you pretty much do the same on the front. Outline the roof, cut away the bits that you don't need. And shape it with your fingers or with your modeling tools to actually take a three-dimensional shape. A rough base shape of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, as you can see here. This is just a very rough shape, don't put as much effort into it as I did with uh, drawing all these lines and stuff, it's not really necessary. Now the next thing I did was to cover this block of foam with uh, the air dry clay, which is, you can see, very soft and easy to model into shape. You probably can do this directly with the polymer clay, but I'm not too sure, so I, I did it the long and hard way, I guess and actually covered my shape entirely with this very soft clay. And you can see it doesn't really stick to the foam, so that's what you're, when your pins come in handy. So you can secure this air dry clay on your base model of foam. Don't push them in fully, so don't do it like this, so you can't get them out once the clay is dry again. So just leave them like this, so you can easily remove them. When it's dry, it's not gonna come off like this either. So. By the way, you will most likely get some cracks because this uh, very soft air drying clay actually loses about 7 to 10 percent of its volume uh, as it dries. So um, just fill up the cracks again so uh, they are covered. It doesn't need to be perfect because you're just going to put the polymer clay on top. I just randomly decided to use the, the polymer clay later on when I saw I couldn't really get the details that I wanted to with the air dry clay. So um, you can probably skip on the next step, which would be making this look much more accurate, much more detailed. Now, once all that was dry, I actually painted it with a water-based paint. Um, just in case, you know, there would be some gaps within the polymer clay that I would use on top. Mm, turned out that wasn't really necessary, so you might as well just skip this step entirely. Next step is to take your polymer clay. And as you can see, it's quite hard and not as easy to manipulate, so you need to give it a good workout, so to say, before you can actually form it nicely, especially if you get larger amounts. But to get any uh, shade, you can mix any shade of gray, you just mix, you know, the appropriate, appropriate amounts of black and white, and you can actually make this a very homogeneous colored mass if you give it enough time and effort. And then you just take your kitchen equipment thing. I'll get it nice and flat, but not too thin. And make sure it doesn't stick to your table, which easily happens. And then put it onto a piece of aluminum foil, because uh, the special thing about this polymer clay is that you actually have to put it in the oven to harden it. So now you've got your flat polymer clay, and uh, looking at various pictures of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant on the internet, for example, you can you know, outline where some of the tiles would be, for example. So determine the structures you need and uh, give it some texture. For example, for tiles, you could use rollers. So it looks like this, like a tile. Or you could shape your roof tiles, for example. 
and also shape the various details that you might need and just put them on top they will pretty much stick once you're done baking them but you can also shape some of the structures and later on glue them together using your PVA glue the tiles you can see on the side of my model for example uh, are not individual tiles but the tiles on the roof of the actual sarcophagus of the power plant are all individual tiles that I shaped accordingly for the chimney's platforms I used two different sizes of octagons as you can see two of the platforms are slightly larger in diameter than the others so I put that onto my flat piece of polymer clay and then just cut it by the edges like this and then make sure you take a hand or something and punch a hole in the middle if that's not perfect don't worry about it we can take that we can take care of that later on using our knife for example which is much easier than messing with the stuff while it's still flexible also cover your wooden stick which will be your chimney with some aluminum foil nice and flat and not like this but you get the idea then take a very thin slice of that polymer clay and make sure it's evenly wrapped around this fuck I'm really not left-handed at all anyway you get the idea it should be a nice and flat piece of something which you can easily pull off that stick so you don't have to put the wood into the oven which I'm not sure how much heat it, heat it actually tolerates depends what you use but if you do this properly, you now have a long slice of aluminum that is properly covering that stick. You can just pull it off and then put it on something on a piece of aluminum foil and put it in your oven. It will not lose its shape. So This is what the polymer clay looks like when it comes out of the oven. You can see it's pretty much like plastic now. Slightly flexible, but should have entirely kept its intended shape if you put it on a flat surface and a flat not crumbled piece of aluminum foil. You can see structures that you've probably modeled into it and it's quite flexible so you can nicely attach it. This is one of the platforms of the chimney. Of course the hole in the center should be the diameter of your chimney that is that clay you put over the wooden stick and baked by now. Um, and you can see I also put in some tiny little gaps here prior to baking it using that knife on the edge of the octagon and in the center there. This is for helping with attaching uh, the wire which will be the scaffolding but you can also add these gaps later on using your uh, metal file or metal saw blade so it doesn't really matter. It's also always good to bake some spares or some random parts which you can cut using scissors easily just in case you need to fill some gaps that you didn't consider before or uh, one of your part breaks because if you handle them too roughly you can see you can actually break that stuff so yeah now using the uh, PVA glue we're gonna attach the different bits and pieces of our sarcophagus the good thing about this glue is uh, it takes quite a long time to harden, so you can actually move and shift the stuff around before it hardens. So after gluing the bits and pieces together, this is what it should look like. You can see quite a few individual tiles and pieces there. Now for the chimney, you'll have your clay covered wooden stick, I'm just imagine it is. Uh, if you now find out that the hole you've left in the platforms is actually too big for that chimney, it's going to be a mess to attach unless you use a little trick. For example, using cardboard, you can uh, make the platforms nice and stable like this and horizontally aligned. And then you can just fill this entire gap in the middle here with your PVA glue. Um, everything is covered with individual pieces of that polymer clay. And uh, the, uh, the base of the chimney has already been painted by uh, white and red paint. Now the chimney's framework is going to be much more difficult to make. So first of all, we have one straight wire that goes through each of the edges of the octagon. You can see this is the one in the final model. It goes straight down here. 
next year we're gonna have to attach the wire that will eventually form all these diamonds and that kind of goes around like a spiral to the top from each of the, the base wires you can see starting with this one it goes round 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 to the top until we eventually get these diamond shapes of overlapping wires this is gonna be the hardest part for sure so this is gonna take a while just be patient and get your super glue ready because you're gonna want to super glue that once you got it in the right position probably hold it in place with a tape if you're unsure with duct tape then super glue it and remove the duct tape while well, you still can and yeah that's that's gonna be tough but you can do it as for the colors you can see i mix the neon yellow with a little bit of that ruby red and a dash of black to get a nice dark rusty color add some of the tiny glass beads then you can see we get that nice rust-like structure that we want for the crumbling sarcophagus of Chernobyl. You can see I also used some of the uh, pure neon orange and neon yellow to add uh, more of that rusty, weird look to it. I created this dirty look on the tiles by dipping the sponge in just a little bit of color and quickly wiping it over the surface like that. I also added some dark grey paint to the framework of the chimney later on and to the top as well to give it more of a dirty and rock look. I carefully paint a little bit of that over the uh, white and red stripes as well. Yeah, for, the, for the entire framework I used the super glue. For everything else I used the PVA glue. You can see the right side of the model. It's just covered with a flat piece of plastic that uh, in theory allows for expanding with a turbine hole that actually belongs there. But well, we'll see about that. So, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to make a 1 to 1000 model of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Reactors number three and four and the sarcophagus entombing unit number four.